Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Ultimate Apocalypse casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a three for all on Unholy Ceremony. Playing as Tau Empire, we've got Yarnum Hunter. As a Force of Chaos, we've got Yo Yo. As the Eldar, we've got the Blast Furnace. And as the Necrons, we have me. It's quite a large map, and with a lot of war to be had, as is indeed a three for all. So there'll be no friendship, no camaraderie in this battle that is to come. Only war, chaos, and mayhem going on here. It's quite an interesting map in the sense that loads of these areas are very, very narrow corridors which play havoc in the old um, pathing department. But Yo-Yo has the advantage in this as he is the most separated from everyone else. I mean, there's got long roads going either side to get to him. Whereas all three of us are kind of compacted in these areas over here. We've only got one relic to fight for. So there's going to be lots of action, I imagine, in the middle here. As well as it being surrounded by lots of strategic points and whatnot. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be good fun. My stra my strategy for this game, as we all know, uh, for every game that I ever play with players of this kind of caliber, is just to hide, build up the fighting force, and hope that everyone else kills themselves before I can then come in and do something semi-useful. Do feel sorry for Yarnum Hunter is that his strategic points at the start are all around the back of his base. So if he wants to get like any good defences up here, he needs to put up some turrets. Can't rely on those listing posts being upgraded to keep them going on. You have one Chaos Attack Bike trundling straight down this uh, long road towards the Eldar base. Well, catch sight of these Guardians that are making their way towards him. Might engage in some argy-bargy with them. Doing a little bit of a drive-by, just ignoring these guys completely. Continuing into the Eldar base. Seeing what you can see. We'll see this listing first, but a listing shrine, shall we say. Now he's going to go and turn around towards these um, burn singers. Opening fire and giving him a little bit of a spinny spin. Picking these guys all the way back. Had one burn singer kind of just dying over in this corner over here. And then, <laughs> Jesus Christ, just, just yeeting that dude. One fell punch. Amazing stuff. Yeah, these guys do not survive long against the Chaos Bike when he's just physically punching them in the face. Glorious stuff. But yeah, Listing Shrine being upgraded will probably see this guy on his travels. Not much going on at the moment. We do have an Earthcast Builder coming over here and capturing, well, building up his Listing Post. Same with these Stealth Suits over here capturing this strategic point. I haven't gone for anything yet at the moment. Just, just two regular old uh, Necron Warriors. Gonna go for some Attack Scarabs to do some, well, some attacking, I imagine. But yeah, Chaos Bike has been sent back home. Do I have a... Where's he gone? Is it... Did he get killed or is he still knocking around? Well, we've got some Chaos Space Marines going up against these Guardian Defenders. Colt is going to decap this location. While the Chaos Space Marines do what they do best, which is killing things. Guardians equipping themselves some blades. We're not really going to win in a straight-up duke out with some Chaos Space Marines. Guard, um, Rangers providing some long-range supporting fire to try and kill these cultists. We'll have to send our attention to these Chaos Space Marines. Do have some attack scouts now chasing after these Earthcast Builders, chomping at the bit. Striking these mechanical beings down. Although I suppose they're both mechanical, aren't they, in the way except for are these Earthcast Builders. have got no soul. They're AI. They're, they're not real in the eyes of the Necrons. It will be taken down. I imagine this listing post will also be feeling the brunt. Got some Necron Warriors testing the waters, looking at this listing post. And we'll be firing away once they trundle their way slowly over here. Doing a little bit of damage. Not going to kill that listing post any degree of swiftness, but it is something. Necron Lord is also out to play. Got some Breaches and Fire Warriors going to be moving over. And trying to take care of these attack scarabs who are... I mean, their primary thing is taking out listing posts. Like, look how, how quickly they're able to gnaw away at the whatever the material the tower used to build up stuff over here on this side we've got a chaos push into the Eldar base, Ranger's still online but won't be online for much longer as this chaos attack bike just slides around uncaring for the traffic code Gatlin's still surviving though so that's, that's something for him listening shrine though, being upgraded not something that the cultists want to take care of over here breaches 
close combat oriented, well, close ranged combat oriented tower, shall we say. Being absolutely murdered by this Necron Lord and the Warriors, don't, although they do manage to take out one squad of Necron Warriors. Some flayed ones teleporting around in the back, going to force these Fire Warriors into a full blown retreat as these Necrons continue to finish off this listing post. Necron Lord also going to turn his attentions to those guys over there. Flayed ones not giving up on the chase. Looking to add some blue skin to their Necrodermis. Over there. They are still going backwards and forwards with the Eldar over on this side. Do quite like how this free-for-all has ended up being two separate 1v1s for the moment. Cultist and Chaos Space Marine still fighting fit. Well, relatively fighting fit, shall we say. Using that heavy cover. You won't see the heavy cover signs above people's heads and Ultimate Apocalypse for reasons beyond my ken. Not sure why, probably something in the code. But yeah, we've now got two Rangers. Great against all the infantry, killing all the cultists. And now these Chaos Space Marines, without their meat shield, will probably want to go all the way back home. Chaos attack by being jazzed up by this heretic. Back to fighting health. Necron Lord and Necron Warriors continuing the push to kill listing posts and all that good stuff. Flayed Ones going back home to get back into the Necro Monolith. Uh, another squad of Flayed Ones reinforcing itself. Got some Fire Warriors over yonder setting up to fire. But that setup time has cost them a model or two. Being stripped apart molecule by molecule by the Gorse Reapers, Gorse Weaponry, whatever, I don't know. Either way, they don't want to walk past all these guys. Like we say, we've got to get past these breaches and these fire warriors. We are just turtling up. We're just trying to hide. We're not trying to be too much of a nuisance. We just want to keep everyone occupied and away from us. We're, we're, do we're doing the, uh, the North Korean strategy, which is if we're just too much of a problem to invade, no one will invade us. That's the idea. Wh where where's that fire coming from? Ah, oh, fire sound coming from over here. Yeah, Chaos Cult is trying to take over other places, but... Eldar have already taken this place. And to be fair, what, the tower have managed to capture these three. Chaos managed to capture these three. And Eldar have managed to snag one of these central contested strategic points. Because I've gone for none. My thinking was, well, my economy comes from plasma generators, so I don't need to push out too far. If I just stay back, tech up. That's the idea. Tell Commander now out on the field. Oh, it's gone for an XV-30 Heavy Builder. Do quite like the Tech Marine arm on him. Got to be increasing the building speed of other doofers. Got Listing Shrine going on this Relic. Which is pretty sweet. Tier 2 for the Elder. Let's have a quick look at the economies. Uh, 2, uh, 7 and 60 for the Tau. 2, 10 and 83 for the Chaos. 141 and 40 for the Eldar, and 120% build speed for me. So we'll look at it from the Chaos perspective. So the Chaos player has got just all the economy in the world at the moment. Certainly in a good position. Guardian's going to go for some uh, D cannon grab platforms. Amazing at destroying all forms of light infantry. And look at these Chaos cultists just being absolutely wrecked by double grab platforms. Also infiltrated ranges as well so that relic there will be stricken down so not relic uh, listing post strategic point whatever you want to call it one heretic in a, in a bit of a bad situation but managing to dodge and bob and weave is out of the way of all this ranger fire not survive that second volley but i mean the fact they survived one volley is, is impressive in itself yeah, these guys will be taking out this listing first. What is the Chaos player going to do in response? Yes. He's got his Hellsmith out on the on the field. Going to go for some more Heretics. In fact, he's just, he's just playing the economic game at the moment. Going for two extra Desecrated Strongholds. Going to be going for all the green money in the world. So definitely playing for that late game. Do have a Ghost Arc coming online. Making its way towards this listing post. Able to take down Titan's buildings and vehicles. Also able to pick up the dead and dying. Which is what I've probably made these Necron Warriors from. Got some flayed ones smack bang in the middle of all these Fire Warriors. Giving these guys some breathing rooms to take out this listing post. Necron Lord teleports in. 
and does all the green stuff. Look at that, just beautiful animations there. Very pretty stuff. Don't have to say that the Necrons have some of the best visual work done on them in Ultimate Apocalypse. But yeah, for this Ghost Arc, any Necrons that fall, we'll just pick them back up and put them straight back into the battlefield, not costing us any resources whatsoever. How at the moment, don't have anything in the way of a response for them. It's been building up all their economy. But a good firing line might technically be able to push these guys back. Base shift going on these flayed ones. Keeping them free from any form of damage, also increasing the health regeneration as well. Necron Lord in Ultimate Apocalypse, he's able to get basically every single um, artifact. You don't necessarily you don't have to buy all your artifacts from, from the Forbidden Archive. There's like a little menu down on where you have like all your build options and stuff. You can level them up and then just basically equip them for whatever it is you fancy. It's quite helpful. Some Havoc Marines out, gonna go for some Chaos Predators. Not sure if the Chaos Predator is gonna do all that well against a mass of Vipers. But we shall see. Havoc's on massing. Vipers going straight into the combat. And actually holding up pretty well. And now at the very least, one Predator now out on the field. Getting his attention to the Vipers that are flying over. And these guys are just going to focus straight on the Plasma Generators. And if they're able to kill a couple, the Chain Reaction will kill all the rest of them. That's the uh, bad side of having all the Plasma Generators next to each other. They all do support each other. The more Plasma Generators you build together, the more of a bonus you give to nearby buildings. But then again, like we say, if they're all together, they all kind of like damage each other, so they're very... Got to be very careful in keeping them and protecting them. Looking like he will lose all his plasma generators. It's not what you want at this stage of the game when all the big toys are coming online. What we've got going on over here? Necron push is still coming on. Destroyers being thrown down as well. The Indomitable March of the Necrons moving into the Tau base proper. We are seeing this listing post with its very thick with two C's railgun. And this is not a gun to be sniffed at. The Ghost Ark will have to be very careful when it's near there. It does seem that the Chaos have pushed off the majority of the Vipers. Only two left. But the Vipers certainly did do the job that was required. All plasma generators are now going to be built up and spaced out over here. Havoc Marines being brought down to low numbers, but we are seeing another squad over yonder. Chaos Predator going to make... I mean, at, at least it's going to be difficult for the D cannons to take down this Chaos Predator, because those D cannons are not ideal against vehicles in any way, shape or form. Guys are now going to be surrounded by the Chaos Predators and will be wiped out as quick as you like. Rangers, only one being re revealed for reasons beyond my ken, but... Fair enough. Third and final Chaos Predator out in the mix. Does seem that Yarnum Hunter has scared my Necrons away. Pro oh, we saw these uh, Shasphere Elite Broadside Battlesuits. Those guys didn't want to risk my... What do you call them? The Ghost Walker. And we completely and totally forgot to build an obelisk on this place. So we're going to go for a second Necron Monolith just to spam out Necron Warriors as we build up into the tiers. Going for that greater summoning core as well. Anything crazy going on in the bases? Oh, we don't have a ghost start. Just continuing the threat. Got some crisis battle suits as well. What have we got on the Eldar side? Oh, just, just Chaos Predators moving in. Have to move to the Eldar side see what they're building up. Got double webway assemblies. Lots of fire dragons as well. And these Chaos Predators don't want to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with those Fire Dragons. Oh no, look at that. Some Rangers just getting in the way of these Chaos Predators. Wonderful little play by Blast Furnace here. Not sure if it's intentional or not, but the effects are the same. Look at a one Chaos Predator. Those are resources that you don't want to waste money on. Apex though, armed with their missile launchers. Will be destroying this listening shrine. Almost ignoring the damage from the Rangers. Although the Eldar have now spread out over onto this side. 
Nine, the Chaos play a lot of his requisition. Bio Dragon is now going to engage these Havoc Marines in close combat, no less, as they do a fair bit of damage in close combat. And their guns aren't necessarily great against heavy infantry. Nice little piece of combat going on right there. Over here, we do have the Tau now returning the favour and will be laying siege onto the Necrons. Necron Lord just doing what he can to keep these guys a little bit occupied just to provide us a little bit more time. But no, sadly, I did try and teleport away, but just not in the nick of time. Do have a double annihilation barrages going for any potential vehicles that the tower are going for, but sadly not going for any vehicles, which is a real pain. So these annihilation barrages won't do all that much, apart from look very intimidating. Do have three Necron Warrior squads, some flayed ones that are not in the Necron Monolith. Enemy fire. Do have the Necron Lord being rebuilt. We do have some Necron Warriors just being on auto reinforced. There'll just be an inf infinite amount of Necron Warriors coming out of this monolith. Which is exactly what you want. You want you want an, a, a non an unending supply of skeletal men's. Do have a John Cena beam coming down. Gonna force the Tau from firing around over in this corner. Not, not, not allowing them to use this wall to hide behind. Annihilation Barrages moving in on either side. But as we see, the pathing is just all... I mean, just look at this. It's like no one can get anywhere. The Ghost Ark going to be sticking around to pick up anyone. It looks like that we're not going to push too far. We're just going to scare these guys away. These broadside Shasphere Elites making very quick work of the Annihilation Barrages. We're going to destroy both of them if we're not careful. Played ones leading the charge. Now this barrage trying to get out of there. Ghost Ark doing a little bit of a spin before <laughs> before turning around itself and maneuvering out of there. Does like will it go down? Almost going down, but not quite. Necron's unsure what to get from from this engagement. They're so slow that by the time they actually get within range, the town have more or less wiped them out quite well. Necron Lord probably should have saved that solar pulse for a little bit later. We have no idea that these broadside battle suits were going to be on the wings. We managed to take out these tower down here. The push continues. But we do have some big bloofers coming in from the tower commander. Knocking all these guys down, killing a lot of models. Good Lord rebuilt. Wanting to stop these guys, but once again dying. Not not great plays by me, I'll be honest. What's going on over here? Just a little bit of a stalemate. No one wanting to do too much. Chaos Predators being reinvigorated. Tier 3 going for the... or Tier 4 technically going for the Chaos. They have gone for their Demon Pit and their Sacrificial Circle. So all the good stuff. Do have a Shrine of the Wailing Doom. A heavy support portal as well. So expect some big toys coming from the Eldar at this stage. More Tau aggression coming over on this side. Fire. Heavy destroyers now out, and we do have an ancient summoning core bringing out a mobile obelisk. This was the plan all along, just hide around and get out those big relic units. I don't have any relic points, but I do believe... Um, hold on. Yeah, so I've got 400 relic resources. And so, like, you just kind of, like, build it up over time and spend it on relic units. So even if you don't have a relic... You still buy at least a couple of things. That means everyone can have fun. Which isn't that the main thing. Anyway, Necron Lord. Is it Necron Lord? Oh, no, it's the Ghost Ark. Ah, because loads of Necrons died over here. So we thought, right, flank and maneuver. Let's just... Get a load of dudes in the Ark and then build them up. Necron Lord. Slamming these Town Warriors away. As these newly infused Necron Warriors are taken down. About much... Of a fight, to be fair. Necron Warriors over here going to be pushing into over on this side. The Tau have their attention split, at least for a short amount of time. Do throw down a Resurrection Orb to get up a whole smorgasbord of Necrons. And now the, ba the battle might be turning in our favour. Warriors taking out Fire Warriors. Bloofers knocking these guys over. Necron Warriors over here keep continuously pouring in to the tower side, but there is a significant amount. We do also have Skyray missile gunships as well in the mix. 
I feel like Mobile Obelix now teleporting straight to the mix. Quite a lethal unit, although I learned the hard way, also quite a fragile one. So maybe not the best idea to uh, deep strike it in the middle of all the Tau weaponry. I thought it was going to be a bit bigger, to be fair, in my, in my defence. So it goes down, but it was there for a little while. But yeah, this, this, this little conglomerate of Tau down here were killed. So something happened, at the very least. Although my army has been more or less wiped out. Do have a Siege Monolith on the way now. So there we go. That costs 250 Relic Points, as you can see. Costing from here, so... There we go. Well, I get a very small amount of Relic Points back over time, but it's a very slow process. The Necronod, once again, being rebuilt. Any pushes going on from this side? No, very quiet, so... Yeah, we may as well just carry on watching this. There we go. Siege Monolith about to be finished. Will be teleported in. Necron Lord jumping around the side, throwing down a John Cena beam, preventing these guys from firing. Siege Monolith descending from on high into the middle. I have not learned from my mistakes. To send this boy into the fray. Look at that. It's slow, it's ominous. Acts very much like your regular Monolith. Just more adapted towards killing vehicles, titans, and superstructures. Yeah, not, not not a bad piece of kit. You can also build up Necron Warriors as well. well. I think it's early Necron Warriors. You can't build anything else from the Siege Monolith. Free from the Siege Monolith, so that's something. And your regular Monolith, they do cost money, do Necron Warriors. Necron Lord's still here, still doing something. Got that base shift on the go. Christ's battle suit will be taken down. Siege Monolith not really surviving all that much against this Stingray gunship, which is just it's just a trio of rail guns. Not pretty from the perspective of someone being shot by them. And yeah, this is this is this is quite an intense firefight going on. We also have some Tau artillery. Firing over the walls. There are some night sives on the way as well. As well as the continual spread of Necron Warriors. Do have a ancient Wraith Lord. Just throwing these boys around. Let's now charge straight in there. Giving these guys a bit of a back... Jeez, that Christ, that's a loud sound. But yeah, just, just backhanding. Keeping that pin pan strong. Showing the haters what this is. A little, little, um, ooh, that's the, uh, that's the, I've got to walk to a different force to maybe not get that down, that was insane, but yeah, that uh, Eldritch Storm, that was uh, from Dawn of War 2, I think, very nice, oh no, that's, just, that's the general sound of the, of the Ancient Wraith Lord, fair enough, oh dear, oh dear, this is, this is a lot of Wraith Guard, these guys are just very explosive, and with their D cannons, Delivering the D to the Chaos Space Marines. Of all the... I mean, they've got some corn Terminators. They've got lots of Havocs, but... With the Ancient Wraith Lord leading the charge... Not sure exactly what they could do. How's the siege going on over here? We do have the Tau continuously pushing in. They have killed our Necromonolith over here. And what can we do against all this madness? It's a sad time for the Necrons over here. Do have lots of Sentry Turrets and Listing Person as well. Over on here, just in case they get flanked. What can we do to resist the Tau encroachment? Yo Yo throws out a GG as the Eldar go for a two pronged attack. Fire Warriors on one side, Ancient Wraith Lord on the other. Yes, yeah, so that is the Chaos player out and out for the count. Got a web sale online for them as well. Of course, more webway assemblies coming online. Necron Lord back out. See what kind of tricks he can pull off here. So realistically, with the Chaos player down and out, does open the map for me to expand over on this side, as well as the Eldar. That is, of course, if I can survive this engagement. We do have a Tomb Stalker now being built up. 
terrifying hentai-esque monster going to be getting this Stingray gunship. The main problem with this Stingray gunship is that its morale is also its health. So it's quite a tough customer to take care of. Necrolord almost going to be taken out for like the 15th bajillion millionth time. But with this Doom Stalker tying up this dude, trying to get him out of the pain zone. As the broadside battle suits open fire, it does give us a little bit of breathing room. How much breathing room, who knows? Doom Stalker does go down. And yes. Now I've now had to turn their attention towards the impressive fighting force of the Eldar. They could have finished me off, but I have to focus on. Oh, up, 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 the. Bit of resurrection orb here for all the Necrons that died. Now we've just got all our Necrons back. And a Annihilation Barrage. Yeah, these broadside battle suits. Yeah, they're not, they're not going to be living for very long. So saved by the Bell, saved by the Eldar almost, which is ironic for a Necron player. Yeah, Yarnum Hunter cannot ignore the Eldar on his doorstep. Gotta keep them at bay. Got a big old how explosive stuff going on. Very slow ring of of destruction. One falling foul into that will be brown breaded. Yeah. That's cool. That's a very cool ability. Lovely aesthetics on that. Got lots of vehicles over on this side. Wraith Guard probably won't be able to contend with these guys very well. So we'll be losing all the Wraith Guard. Let's have a look at the current economies at the moment. 398 and 113 for the Tau. We've got 0, obviously, for the Chaos. 588 and 591 for the Eldar. And 121 for me. Because we don't have much in the way of economy. We'll look at it from the perspective of the Eldar just so we can see what they're building up. I'm going to go for a Airborne Phoenix. The big, chunky unit. More Wraith Guard on the way as well. Eldar trying to... Bend their relic in the middle. Tau not having any of it there. Fire dragons making quick work of this Sky Ray gunship, but we do have a XV-89 commander on the field. Armed with all the good stuff. Very little that the commander can't take care of. Fire dragon seems to be taken care of, and the center will not hold for the blast furnace. He will lose his relic by the looks of things. Viper's trying to contend with going on down here, but these Arc Defense turrets are absolutely lethal. Really difficult to take on. I'm trying to push in to this side, but to no avail. We haven't got really much to take these guys on. So we are going to teleport back home and just generally chill. Just relax. Rebuild the economy. That's That'd be a nice idea. Got Phantom Titan on the way out now. Instead of going for that Airborne Phoenix. Rangers once again blocking the path of the vehicles of his opponent you have a great ethereal better than your regular old ethereal he's had his Kellogg's he's feeling great and yeah he's, he's just gonna charge straight in he he doesn't care so much he needs no bodyguards he's got a big stick he's got a force field which I imagine is also health not a care in the world is this great ethereal. We have these Rift Guards now equipping themselves. What have you equipped yourselves with? That one's like Bright Lances to me. Still not doing all that much damage. Got some bloopers coming in. Big explosions. Guard not moving quick enough to avoid that. Lord of mercy, these Wraith Guard are not... Well, I mean, they're, they're, it, it looks like they're in some sort of very deadly disco. Bright lights, flashing colours. Hope you don't have epilepsy. Got one Spirit Seer in there as well to keep these guys moving quick as you like, but... I don't think that's what they need right now. They need... They need this Titan to be finished ASAP. We've got lots of cow coming in. Hazard suit pushing in. That was a really loud sound. What was that? Not a clue. Got the destruction stone being added on the Eldritch Spire. 
This is basically, what from what I understand, just a huge new that the Eldar can have access to. Yeah, hazard suits. Looking like they're going to fall soon, but then just there's, there's more hazard suits to replace them. Ancient Wraith Lord being taken down, but we do have a Phantom Titan now on the field. And the range on this bad boy, the damage it can do, absolutely insane. But these Hammerhead gunships are built to take down Titans. While it will take a lot to kill these guys, it's not impossible. Got some blooming singularities being opened up on these guys. Absolutely wiping out that entire force over there. Gunfire battle suits. Well, we'll probably want to back off. The Eldar now have a good way of defending themselves in the form of this Titan. Not sure if he's able to get out of this little city of Eldar stuff, though. What is the Tau going to do in response? Are they building anything huge? They've got their Guidance Beacon. Doesn't seem to be building up anything huge, though, at the moment. It's relying on this XV-8. Oh, sorry, XV-89 Commander to do what he can, but... Won't be doing all that much. And what am I doing? I'm just chilling out. I'm just having a great time. We're all talking on Discord at this point, and I know that those two guys are fighting, so I'm thinking, right, I'm going to wait for one of them to die, and then move in and see if I can kill one of them when they're in a weakened state. That's the hope, that's the dream. Phantom Titan tiptoeing over these burn singers. Well, I mean, what, what's firing at you? Got some invisible dudes over here. No? Who are you firing at? Oh, you're, you're firing at the, the Great Ethereal. He was just standing against his heavy support portal, just slapping it around. It means business. I mean, business is not good, in all honesty. It's not. It's not doing well. But he did try. Oh, and relative silence at the moment. This Phantom Titan just opening warp holes on these broadside battle suits. These guys are nowhere near in range. They know how I felt earlier on in the game. What's I going to do? Going to go for all the upgrades in the world. I'm going to go for a crew shaping center. Some more hazard suits, more hammerhead gunships. I've gone for the Titan assembly and going for improved plating and all that stuff. So potential for Titan on Titan action, although all these hammerhead gunships are coming out, so maybe it's just Yardam's going to focus on his anti-Titan weaponry. Which isn't a bad idea. It's quick to build. There's a lot of damage against Titans. Once it dies, you can just rebuild them again. So it's less effective than buying a Titan, I would say. But less risk, I think. When saying that all the way over here, still able to support these guys in the firefight. Rift Guard have critting themselves with a Wraith Cannon. Pop them against the Hammerhead gunships. And these hazard... In fact, actually, these, these vehicles and stuff don't seem to be doing all that well against the Wraith Guard. It's not, not what they want. It's not what they uh, want in a game of Dawn of War Ultimate Apocalypse. Going for another ancient Wraith Guard. And just some more battle suits on the way. Upgrades have been finished in the Titan Assembly Beacon. And how much money has he got? Oh, he's got, he's got tons. He could buy like a million Titans if he really wanted to. But he's kind of just funneling all his dudes one at a time. Might need to hold these guys back and build up a pool of battle suits before going in. I'm going to go for a million Fire Warriors as well. Phantom Titan. Almost half of his shield health at the moment. Seeing this Guidance Beacon. And the Crute Shaping Centre. We'll be taking that down quickly and sharply. Got some uh, 
Pathfinders as well, but they are being squad caps here. XP9 hazard suits jumping straight into the mix. Looks to engage these guys in a game of plus range combat. But the Rift Lords stand firm. The Rift Lords do not mind this engagement at all. Yeah, I mean, most of these units are actually ideal against Titans and vehicles, but the Rift Guard are elite heavy infantry. Although, then again, we do have the Fire Warriors out now, so they might be able to take these guys on as and when they can. Pathfinders marking their targets as the Phantom Titan continues its indomitable march into the Tau base. But the Rift Guard numbers do seem to be thinning somewhat. Once these guys go, the Tau can then focus all their attention on the Phantom Titan. And while, yes, Titans are amazing units in their own right, on their own, they can't win games. They need to be supported. My dude's still just chilling out. Going for that tier 4, or technically tier 5 if you're using Soulstorm currency. Looking for those big relic units. Great Imperial, once again. Being the Chad that only a greater feel can, calling down a big explosion right on top of him. That's pretty cool, man. They're taking himself out in the process. A true lad. Will charge back in. Throwing himself down. And the Tau are losing all sorts of and he does throw out the GG. So now it's just me and and the Blast Furnace. So now is the time for me to move out and see, because obviously I don't know what state they're in. I don't know whether the Titan is half health or full health. I'm just thinking, right, now is my time to shine. Stark, not even bothering to repair it. Just instantly wipes out. And I'm thinking, hmm, this is not a great situation for me. Necro Lord being shot. Trying to take on these ancient Rift Guard, but being slowed down, being wiped out. All my Necron Warriors not not even getting into combat before they all die. Yeah, this is this is just a massacre, boys and girls. Sad time for all. Am I getting anything useful out at the moment? I am gonna go for a restore monolith. But while I'm getting out of a restore monolith, Blast Furnace throws out. Just, just basically just pure hell hell on earth destroying all my economy in one fell swoop doesn't do all that much damage against my main structures but still that's something it reminds me of that big storm you get in uh, in stalker uh, clear sky or, or whatever you call it where every now and then a big storm comes along as I quick get inside before the zone rots your brain and turns you into a zombie. Anyway, restore monolith versus an Eldar Titan. I mean, it's not a fair fight, but the, the fight's not over till it's over. Necro Monolith using what weapons it can. It's quite a tough cookie. Trying to go and build another Doomsday Arc, but we've got no cap because all our obelisks are dead. And the Necromon lift does indeed fall down, and that will be it, I am afraid. But yeah, so Blast Furnace wins it with, with the Eldar, so very nice game by all. Everyone did an amazing job. Well, everyone apart from me, I, I, I do have to say, I just chilled out of the back, mate. But yeah, cool, thanks for all, for all of you who came and watched all the usual stuff. Uh, one pound a month gets you one extra game a week on the old Patreon. My name's been Mr. Lanchak, pleasure as always, never chore. And I will see you in a bit. Peace.